Well, this this doesn't look a thing like Chicago. No, it reminds me of Florida. It does. It's beautiful. It's nice. But it doesn't feel like we're in Chicago. No. Well, we're not actually in Chicago. No. We're sort of near Chicago. Mm -hmm. Very, very near Chicago. We're heading over to the Illinois Railway Museum. Mm -hmm used to be called something else and then they decided no they were more than just electric cars and trolleys and stuff they were every conceivable contrivance that ever went down a railroad track so they changed the name to the Illinois Railway Museum which apparently is the world's largest railroad museum or at least America's largest railway museum so this should be fascinating and interesting because they say they have a ton of really neat stuff so check this out the Illinois Railway Museum. The Illinois Railroad Museum is in Union, Illinois, not far at all from Chicago. You can just drive right over there, doesn't take long. They started off years ago collecting trolleys and electric inner urbans and that sort of thing, but very quickly expanded into collecting everything that ran on rails and even things that didn't. Today they have everything from cable cars to steam locomotives and fairly modern diesels. This is the machine that brought us to Illinois from Salt Lake City. This is a shea that they're restoring here and they were having a fundraiser to get finishing money. And so they had an open house at the San Filippo Estates and uh, well we've always wanted to see that and so we threw a few hundred dollars into the pot to restore this engine and came out. This is what you call your win-win situation. The locomotive's going to get restored and we had a grand grand time screwing around. Enough money was raised that the locomotive will be running again here in just a few months. The museum has a large loop of track, but they've also been working on rebuilding a main line, and they now have several miles of main line trackage extending out of the museum area. And as they have dozens and dozens of pieces of operational equipment, this means they can be running both the loop and the main line on the weekends. The actual museum area is positively massive. Look at the size of this yard that they have. But most of their equipment is actually kept indoors. They have something like a dozen really large buildings that they've built to house all of their locomotives and passenger cars inside out of the weather. You can see a couple of their smaller storage buildings here in the distance. As a Western Railroad fanatic, I'm not used to seeing flatland like this. I'm used to trains winding their way up a cliff face or something like that. But it was really fun to take a train at a reasonably high rate of speed out through the cornfields for miles and miles. We had a ball! And as typical of railroad museums everywhere we have ever been, the people there are just absolutely fun and fascinating and informative and just a gas to hang around with. There was a time in America where it seemed like every train that was moving was either coming from or going to Chicago. And so this truly, truly is a massive railroad hub. We've certainly heard about all of these eastern roads and are familiar with these road names. But it was great to see them actually painted on equipment, and equipment that runs, too. Okay, let's get down to business. Let's start exploring all of these buildings that house the equipment. This building houses private cars and some other passenger cars. Check this out. Nevada Northern Business Observation Car Number 10. This is one elegant, elegant private business car, and it was built by one of my favorite railroads, the Nevada Northern. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, these business cars were, well, the rough equivalent of a private corporate jet. Now I hope you've seen the shows that we have here on the channel about the Nevada Northern, 
The Nevada Northern Museum is located in Ely, Nevada, and they have several operating steam engines and more coming. It's an absolutely beautiful place, so check it out. Number 10 is just one of the really beautiful business cars that they have stored here in the building. All of these business cars are just incredible. But they also have some really, really elegant chair cars. Anything needed to run a passenger train, including dining cars, and a couple of my favorite things, baggage cars and RPOs. Check out this goofy little signal. It's only about three feet tall. I wanted to adopt it and bring it home. Now they said that would be a felony, so I left it. But they have a lot of signals here. Signals like I've never even seen. Just this huge, huge, amazing collection of signals and signage. Signage off of depots and other types of signage as well. And they have everything from cable cars to turbine engines, just all kinds of stuff. Check out this RDC, self-propelled passenger car. And check this out, one of the Union Pacific 8500 horsepower big blow turbine locomotives. There are only two survivors of these, this one and one in Ogden, Utah, which has been on the show a couple of times. Hopefully you've seen the show on whatever happened to the atomic train, which is really more about turbines. It's just that the atomic train was also a turbine. There was a coal-fired version of these things, which was the largest locomotive ever built. And here's one of the great American workhorse engines, a GG1 off the Pennsylvania Railroad. This building houses their rather extensive collection of steam locomotives. It's a huge, huge building, which it needs to be because they have a lot of steam engines, including one that was captained by the world's most famous locomotive engineer, Casey Jones. Some of these engines are positively huge. This is a Santa Fe Northern. Interestingly, there are now two of these that have been restored to operating condition, one in Los Angeles and one in New Mexico. Okay, and here's my favorite, a 19th century Rogers 440 locomotive. It's actually very reminiscent of Union Pacific number 119, one of the two engines that was present in 1869 for the driving of the Golden Spike. And yes, there's a couple of shows on that here on the channel, so check that out. They have everything from teeny, teeny, tiny to, oh my crap, massive and all of them in pretty good condition because they're in here, out of the weather. Over time, many of these engines are going to be restored to operating condition. Certainly not all, but some. Okay, check this thing out. This is a North Fork and Western Mallee. These were true Malleys in that they recycled the steam from the rear set of cylinders into the front set of cylinders. This is one incredible collection of steam locomotives. I was just positively blown away. I don't know that I've ever seen such a collection of engines in one place. Okay, here's the pride and joy of the museum. Frisco 1630, a beautifully restored, fully operational decapod, which was supposed to be running today, but darn it, they broke it. So we rushed over to the steam shops. We tend to ignore this sign whenever we see it. We found out that they broke one of the spring hangers and they were working feverishly to get the thing running again. But, well, it was just not to be. It's gonna be a few days before it's back on the track. The steam shops are kind of off over by themselves just a bit. And this is where they service all of their operating steam engines. Here soon, there's going to be a Shea over here, as the Shea is going to be operational as well. A lot of the work over here is being done by volunteers. They have a regular army of volunteers and docents. 
Now this thing, as I said, is a decapod, meaning that it has five driving axles, ten drivers. It's a rather unusual configuration, but that's part of what makes it so cool. Well, as it often turns out, we missed a lot of the museum. We get so into the stuff we're looking at that then we sort of miss a lot of other stuff. And on a museum this huge, that just happens. But fortunately, our visit here did help raise some money to get this Shea back on the track. So that gives us an excuse to come back. Well, that is one huge, fascinating railway museum. Wow, no kidding. And once again, we overstayed our welcome and got the bum's rush well, out of yeah, there. We yeah, the last ones out of we're there. always the last ones out. Mm -hmm. And once again, it was like, would you people go? Just go. Go, go home. <laughs> go back to your hotel. Go somewhere. Because we'd like to yeah, go home and yes. put away our stuff. <laughs> So we got kicked out again, uh, still some more. Come back it's, tomorrow. <laughs> it's what we do. It's fun though. Are we lost? I think so again. Holy cow. I think we're supposed to turn. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, if you haven't been over to the channel, do get over to the channel. And the easy way to get over there is to click on the blue subscribe button, which isn't there right now because the button, just as we are lost, the button is lost. I'm going to turn here and see if I can't figure out where the heck we are. Do you want me to call up Siri? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, oh, Siri. I hate to have to always rely on Siri, but yeah. I think, oh. oh. I quite enjoy you arguing with her, but anyway. It's a dead end. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's not No, good. this isn't where we wanted to go. No. Okay, well, anyway, if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe, and you can do that by clicking on the blue button, which will be appearing as soon as I make a U-turn in this parking lot and get back on where we're supposed to be actually headed, I hope. <laughs> anyway, a blue button will soon be appearing just down here that says subscribe. And you can click on that, it'll take you to the channel and make you a subscriber. And notice, doing <laughs> It just magically appeared as we're lost in this parking lot here. There you go. <laughs> well, at any rate, we are not sure how you found this fun and interesting example of us being lost in the woods on the <laughs> internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again in one week with some more massive screwing around. See you then. Bye-bye.